Let me start today's video with a song that has crossed a million views on YouTube. As you could make out, the song by Gaurav Dada demands the reinstatement of a regiment that was disbanded by the British after World War II. Uh, this demand echoed in Lok Sabha in July 2024 when first time MP Chandrasekhar Azad mentioned it in his debut speech in Parliament. Bharat ki sabse prachin mein Bahadur regiment mein se ek Chamar regiment ko pune bahar kar, bahal kara jaye, aisa bhi mera aap se haak rahe. What is the Chamar regiment? Why was it discontinued? We will try to peel the layers of an extremely obscure slice of Indian military history in this video. In fact, there is so little written and hardly anything spoken about this regiment that I had to read books on military history, speak to some of my friends who have retired from the army to satiate my curiosity to put this episode together. I am Manisha Dikari and you are watching First Things Fast. <laughs> The Chamar Regiment, raised in 1943 during World War II, is a significant yet often overlooked part of the British Indian Army's history. Composed primarily of soldiers from the Chamar community, a Dalit group traditionally marginalized in Indian society, this regiment's formation marked a radical shift from the British Army's usual recruitment from so called martial races. The martial race theory is one of many dangerous nonsense that the British peddled in India and other colonies. It was propounded in the aftermath of India's first war of independence in 1857. In fact, the theory is credited to have been first explained in an official report of an inquiry into the causes of what the British like to call a mutiny. That is the 1857 War of Independence. The theory basically drew a distinction between communities based on the subjective idea that one community was racially more martial, braver, slash more courageous than another. Hindustani khun aisa hai jo ki darna ya piche hatna nahi janta. Now, from all the reading I did on the subject over the past week, uh, not one basis for the theory is worth mentioning here. Uh, there is a great deal of literature, sure, uh, from Russia to Prussia, Iraq to Afghanistan. A lot was happening in the world in the mid-1800s. And the Brits, after the scare of the 1857 war, were basically left shaken and they were looking for ways to avoid a repeat. Darasal 1857 ki kranti, British shashan ki salo se chali ya rahi, daman kari aur anyaay poorn nitiyo ke khilaaf shuru hui thi. After 1857, many experts have said that the British now wanted their army to be even more loyal to the crown and not to the people. Uh, in India, Maharashtra to be more precise, the British Indian army had stopped recruiting Mahars in the Bombay infantry after the martial class theory gained a ground and the army began recruiting mainly from Punjab in the 1880s. Indian army ki hai! Indian army ki hai! In fact, B.R. Ambedkar's father had served in the Mahar infantry in Mumbai until the 1890s and was among the veterans who were campaigning for the reinstatement of the unit. Maharao ko unki martial paramparao ke karan pehle Shivaji aur baad mein British Sena mein seva dene ka avsar mila. When World War I broke out, the wish of Ambedkar's father and his former colleagues was fulfilled. A new Mahar regiment was commissioned, only to be disbanded again in 1922 after the war ended. Now, during World War II in the 1940s, B.R. Ambedkar was a member of the Defence Committee on the Viceroy's Council and he succeeded in giving the Mahar regiment a new life all over again. Mahar regiment ka gathan, pehli October 1941 mein Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar ke prayasun se hua. Uh, this is the same period that the Chamar Regiment, the Assam Regiment, the Sikh Light Infantry comprising the Ramdasi and the Mazhabi Sikhs also came into being. But the Indian Army remained largely Punjabi dominated. In other colonies such as Shia Iraq, the army was Sunni dominated. In the Burmese majority Burma, the army was mainly made up of Karens, Chins and, and Kachins. There were similar examples from colonial Indonesia, uh, Togo, Ghana and Nigeria. In his book, Army and Nation, Ian Wilkinson writes, In country after country, such ethnically imbalanced armies proved fatal to democracy soon after independence. A new democracies were overthrown as minority-controlled militaries sought to preserve their power against new democratic majorities. 
and as ethnic majorities used force to try to displace minority groups from power. So while the basis for the martial race theory may be mostly bunkum, it had absolutely real-world consequences across countries, across continents, many, many years later. One of the examples you can probably relate to is Pakistan's. After independence, the Pakistan army suffered from a very palpable bias against the Bengali brothers from East Pakistan. By 1955, there were only 14 East Pakistani officers in the Pakistani army, compared to 894 from the so-called martial Punjabis from West Pakistan. What do you think would happen? In 1971, East Pakistan broke away and Bangladesh was born. But let's return to the subject of the hour. The regiment that Chandrasekhar Azad once reinstated was formed when the British were facing manpower shortages during World War II. Traditionally, the British Indian Army recruited heavily from communities like the Sikhs and the Gorkhas. However, as the war intensified, the British sought to mobilize every available resource leading to the formation of the Chamar Regiment. These are the men of whom the communiques speak in engagements in many theatres of war. The Chamar Regiment was deployed to the Burma Front, where they faced the Japanese forces. Despite initial skepticism about their fighting capabilities, the regiment demonstrated exceptional valor and resilience. Darasal, Chamar Regiment was a very strong force. This regiment ne Japanese one of their most notable contributions, apparently, came during the Battle of Kohima in 1944, a critical engagement in the Burma campaign. Here, the soldiers played a critical role in halting the Japanese advance, showcasing their ability to adapt to jungle warfare and maintain high morale under challenging conditions. Japan ki sanik dusre vishu yuddh ke dauran sabse khunkar sabse taakatwar thi. Lekin jab Battle of Kohima hua, to us vak Chamar Regiment ke ladako ne bahadru se ladai ladte huye. Despite their commendable performance, the Chamar Regiment was disbanded in 1946 as part of a broader post-war demobilization. Uh, several factors contributed to this decision. Uh, primarily, the British Indian Army was undergoing a massive reorganization, reducing the number of units raised during the war. There may have been other reasons as well. Angrejo ne jin regiments ko bhang kiya, usme Chamar Regiment bhi shamil thi. जिसने नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस के साथ मिलकर ब्रिटिश सुकुमत के खिलाफ विद्रोह कर दिया था। उन्होंने अपने ही भारतीयों पर गोली चलाने से इनकार कर दिया। इसके बाद अंग्रेजों ने 1946 पर इस पर प्रतिबंध लगा दिया था। After independence, although India officially junked the whole martial race theory, the composition of the army did not change very much. The basic logic here was don't fix something that is not broken. But after the wars with Pakistan in 65 and 71. And as China became less of a threat, the issue of caste representation in the army started to gain ground once again. The story I will tell you next was also told in the book I mentioned earlier. It's called Army and Nation by Stephen Wilkinson. Uh, and the story goes something like this. In 1972, then Defence Minister Babu Jagjeevan Ram was going through the role of Indian Military Academy cadets of that year. Now, how many cadets were from the scheduled castes, the minister asked. The answer was 1%. Jagjeevan Ram then apparently wrote a strong note to Sam Manikshaw, who was then the Army General, asking him why the Army was not following the norm to reserve 15% seats for scheduled castes and 7.5% for scheduled tribes. Manikshaw is believed to have responded by saying, this DM has gone mad. By DM, he meant Defence Minister. But he later got Lieutenant General Sinha to draft a clever reply. A reply that mentioned that some clause in the notes had exempted the army from reservations. The reply also said that only the officer ranks had just 1% scheduled castes, while the rest of the army had over 15% uh, scheduled castes. Over the years, many people have gone to the courts to get the army to follow reservation. Many petitioners have filed PILs demanding new class regiments. The Chamar Regiment's disbandment did not erase the contributions and sacrifices. While they did not receive the recognition they deserved during their time, the legacy endures. It's no surprise that leaders like Chandrasekhar Azad want to revive it once again. As Gaurav Dhala says in his song, Chamar Regiment border par rahe, wo din hum ko If you found this video informative, please like, comment and subscribe for more updates. Thank you for watching First Things Fast.